The gap is closed to a second. Through 14 for the final time. Michael hey, McDowell comes to onto the front stretch in Indy. The 38-year-old is going to win. At year's end, this might be the most impressive win that we look back on in 2023. Michael McDowell finally breaking through, this time at the road course of the Brickyard. This was the longest green run in nearly a decade that was capped off by this win. This was a win that beat Chase Elliott, of all people, on a road course. And this was utter domination from a driver and a team that nobody saw doing this ever. But I think the real question in all of this, how did Michael McDowell get here? How did a driver that five years ago was thought of as a backmarker dominate a race, enter the playoffs, and possibly could move past the round of 16 in the playoffs to the round of 12 where anything could happen? Well, I think we need to look back at Michael McDowell's career because it is one that, while not like Martin Truex Jr. of going from mid-pack to domination every week, it is one that is very rare in modern NASCAR. So let's get into it. Starting out, let's go all the way back to his first season in the Cup Series. In 2008, he raced a double zero at Michael Waltrip Racing after Dale Jarrett retired. In this, Jarrett had raced the 44 car into the top 35, and David Rudiman raced a double zero into the top 35. Those are the guys who could qualify into each race without having to worry. Well, Rudiman would go to the 44, while McDowell would take the double zero. And to be completely honest, at year's end, it was pretty subpar. He had a finish that averaged under 30th, he didn't get any top 10s, and this is what we all remember him for from that year. At the time, many saw this as McDowell's only chance at greatness. After all, we had just got done in 06 and 07 of seeing rookie classes and different drivers that were young come up before they were ready, have their shot, and never get one again. And it seemed like that at first. He would go down to the NASCAR Xfinity Series and mostly race for JTG in their 47 car, but also race a bunch of other different teams just trying to put a full season together. He started with JTG and only got five top 10s on the season and a 21st place average finish in 34 races. He was more or less just a driver who was there who could occasionally flare up. In the Cup Series, though, he was at the bottom of the barrel. He was a starting parker in Cup, only managing to qualify into eight races with Tommy Baldwin racing, never finishing any of those in the 36 car because he was just there to collect a paycheck for the team. In 2010 and 11, he would just continue this, start in parking for Prism in the 55, Whitney in the 46, and also being in the 66, and more or less, this was the low point of his career. The highlight could also be seen as a bad moment as well, as when Kyle Busch was suspended in 2011 for crashing Ron Hornday in the truck race at Texas, it was Michael McDowell who was scheduled and tapped to go and replace Bush. Many saw this as a redemption, a chance for him to prove once more why he deserved to have a good ride, what he could do in top equipment. What did he do with this chance? He brought it home to a 33rd place finish, looking woefully off the pace, and for many, they just had reaffirmed what they thought of McDowell. A backmarker driver who was overrated, not ready, or just didn't deserve to be in the Cup Series. Instead, maybe having a space taken up for a driver who could have been there and been more talented. It would actually get better from here. In 2012 and 2013, he would race the 98 car for Phil Parsons. He was a starting parker still in 2012, but it was clear the team was at least going to try and make some attempts at racing with the new Gen 6 car in 2013. And immediately they saw a breakthrough. Both Michael McDowell and PPR had scored their first top 10 a ninth place run in the 2013 Daytona 500. And while a blip on the radar in McDowell's career, 
it changed one of the major stats in his arsenal from a goose egg to an actual number. From 2014 to 2017, though, he would actually be able to start racing again and would ascend again. In 2014, he went to Levine Family Racing, driving their number 95 car. He got a top 10 at the Summer Daytona race and, for the first time since 2008, was not a start and parker in the Cup Series. Instead, he and Levine took a part-time team-building schedule. And in 2015, they did the same thing. 16 starts, and while the finishers weren't all that good, he only got one DNF in that time. It was clear the team was starting to build something more and more, and in 2016, he ran 31 races, finishing in the top 30 in points for the first time in his career, and getting multiple top 10s in a season for the first time in his career, finishing 10th at Daytona in the summer, as well as a season finale. But the highlight of his 2016 season was in the Xfinity Series at Road America. 2017 saw him go and do something for the first time in his career and something he's done every single season in the NASCAR Cup Series since. He ran all 36 races. And as well in that season, he also got his first top five at the fourth in the Daytona summer race as well. And a career high 26th in the points. But... For McDowell, while this was the peak of what he did at Levine Family Racing, he was moving on, this time to where he is today, the number 34 of Front Row Motorsports. In 2018, though, he would get a top 10 in the 500 and match the 26th in points he got the year before. It was the second year in a row he'd done this, and it was a great start for the 34 team, which had been a perennial backmarker. In 2019, he got a fifth at Daytona in the 500, as well as the fall Talladega race. And while he didn't improve on points, his average finish did slightly improve, and it set up a monumental 2020, a season that would really set up where he is now in his career. In 2020, he had four top 10s, 23rd in the point standings, and he started running more often and consistently in the top 20 just off of speed. Yeah, a few more road courses helped, but overall, the team was improving and the chemistry was there. He had much more speed, and it led directly into 2021, where once more, he would get another great achievement in his career. Him, McDowell in tow, Dylan on the bottom. The runs on top. Whoa! Teammates! Around they go in a hard crash. Kyle Busch. Kyle Larson. Caution is out. Bubba Wallace is in this. Austin Sendrick, hard hit by Kyle Busch. Many remember the Daytona 500 win as the only thing McDowell did in 2021. But the thing is, he started the season with three straight top 10s and was as high as fourth in the point standings. He never fell below 19th even when the team started to falter. And while he was eliminated in the round of 16, he had a career year of a win, two top fives, five top 10s, and a 17th place average finish while qualifying for the playoffs finishing 16th. In 2022, with the next-gen car, he didn't get a win, but he did get a faster pace. He started slow in the season, probably one of the worst starts he had had in years, but he got faster as the year went on. More road courses definitely did help with this, but in the final 10 races of 2022, he had seven top 20s in those races and probably could have finished better in pretty much all of them. He had two top fives, yes, but the consistency was starting to build with 12 top 10s on the year and a career high 16.7 average finish. And that all led to 2023. The average finish is lower, but the speed and the visibility of how good they are in the eye test is certainly there. He had a top 10 at a variety of different tracks. He's run top 15 most of the season, and he dominated at Indy, leading 54 laps en route to a win, and now currently sits 15th in the points. With 12 races remaining in the 2023 season, anything is possible. McDowell has been improving as the years went on, and it seems like this team is starting to peak at the right time. So with that, I'm going to pass it on to you and ask how far do you think Michael McDowell can go with the 34 team? Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to this channel for more great NASCAR content. Thank you so much to all my channel members for your continued support. And until next time, have a good one.
<laughs> McDowell supremacy.